So I just uh, wanted to announce, uh, we've been working all weekend, very diligently, very hard, that General H.R. McMaster will become the National Security Advisor. Just three guys on a couch. That's former President Trump in 2017 when he named Lieutenant General H.R. McMaster as his new National Security Advisor. McMaster would serve in that role for a little over a year, advising Trump on some of the most pressing foreign policy challenges. And tomorrow, McMaster's new book, At War With Ourselves, will be published. It looks back on those 13 months at the White House and what he believes a second Trump term might look like. General H.R. McMaster, who's a CBS News contributor, joins us now. General, thank you very much for being here. Hey, Tony, great to be with you. West Point, you, PhD from UNC Chapel Hill, 34 years as a commissioned officer, and then National Security Advisor on top of all that. You know your stuff. Uh, I know you've got a lot about Trump in the book, but I want to talk about Kamala Harris off the top, because she's in the news now, obviously. She's running for president. Yeah. Uh, you called the Obama foreign policy weak need. Yeah. We got a little bit of a peek of what she would be like as commander-in-chief in her DNC speech. She talked about defending American values, maintaining the most lethal and strongest military on the planet, standing up to Iran, and said this, I will never waver in defense of America's security and ideals because in the enduring struggle between democracy and tyranny, I know where, where I stand. What do you make of her as a commander-in-chief? Well, Tony, I think we, we all want to hear more, right? We want to hear more about foreign policy. We want to hear more about national defense because I think what, what's happened is we, we're seeing the coalescing of what we might call an axis of aggressors. This is the two revisionist powers on the Eurasian landmass, Russia, uh, and China, uh, and Iran, which has become more and more aggressive as we see the Middle East in flames and, and there's this sort of ring of fire strategy around Israel and you know, North Korea, you know, not to be left out. So it's a really dangerous time. So we need to hear more about what does she mean by peace through strength? I think what has been provocative to our enemies has been the perception of American weakness. And I think in the Biden administration, they haven't helped that perception very much. In fact, you know, I think that the value of a lot of the Trump administration aspects of foreign policy and national defense only became you know, uh, really obvious to many Americans after the Biden administration reversed some of those policies. And I'm talking really mainly about the Middle East in that connection and, and Iran in that connection. Well, you know, in, in, in foreign affairs, there's a, in, in diplomacy, there's an idea of strategic ambiguity sometimes. What you lay out in the book seems like strategic chaos at best, <laughs> right? So how is that right. foreign policy where no one really knows what's going to happen next a better yeah. option? Well, Tony, for whoever's elected president, I think what is really important is to put into place a process that allows that president to make the best decisions to advance American interests. And so the story in, at War With Ourselves is really trying to transcend that war with ourselves and, and help you know, a disruptive president, Donald Trump, disrupt what needed to be disrupted to advance American interests. And, and so what I'm hoping is that a future national security advisor who might be working for kind of a, a difficult personality as president you know, might see in this book how you can put together a process that can deliver good outcomes for the American people. It's an incredibly detailed read. You get a lot of credit for taking close Thanks. notes and obviously consulting folks who were also keeping notes at the time. Yeah. You talk a few times about how different world leaders, yeah. Putin, Erdogan, Netanyahu, especially among others, tried to manipulate former President right. Trump because he was so impressionable at times. Yeah. You got any sense how they might act around an American president who's a woman? Yeah. Well, you know, I think it all depends on the personality of the person more than the sex of the person, right? I, I really think that you know, foreign leaders are always sizing up a president. And one of the things that I would often try to stress with to President Trump is, hey, whenever you say something, whenever you, whatever you say in a speech, whatever you say in a public statement, Americans will pay, pay kind of attention to it. But the foreign audiences will, will parse every single word. So I think it's really important for an American president to understand that he, that he or she has multiple audiences and to craft a message in a way that, again, advances American interests and, and strengthens our security and, and, and promotes prosperity for Americans. Do you think former President Trump understood that? Well, I think he did. So the, st the story in the book is in large measure about how our team worked together to help him make the best decisions. And what he would do is evolve his understanding over time and at times make really tough decisions. But also the story in the book is how difficult it was for him at times to keep that decision, in part because people know how to kind of push his buttons. You know, this will make you look weak to your political base. This will, you know. So I, I think that in, in writing the story, I'm hoping to, if he's reelected, to inoculate him a little bit uh, you know, so, so that he's not that easy to, 
you know, to, to manipulate, you know, and, and to, to appeal to, you know, maybe some of his insecurities and, and some of his predilections. But, General, you know, on this question of if he's reelected, a, a lot of people during that administration talked about the adults in the room, Secretary Tillerson, uh, Mathis, yourself. We have no idea who those people would be in a second Trump term. Yeah. Does, not, does that not give you pause? Are you not worried that yeah. you, a person like you will not be there? Well, Tony, I think there are a lot of good people who still want to serve. One of the themes in At War With Ourselves is the rewards of service. You know, President Trump was my sixth commander in chief. I took the oath of service at age 17 on the, you know, the plane at, at West Point. And so it was an easy decision for me. And I hope that if, whether it's President Trump or President Harris, that, that the best uh, Americans will say, heck yes, I'll serve. I'll serve my country. I'll serve under the Constitution of the United States. You have to choose them, though. Well, and they have to be confirmed, too. And I yeah. think there's some good, yeah. so good people who could do it. I mean, I, I really, you know, and, and you know, the whole, Tony, the idea of, like, the axis of adults, yeah. I really think that what people owe the elected president is to give that president options, not to try to manipulate the president or, or to protect the country yeah. and maybe the world from the president, because if you try to do that, you're actually undermining the Constitution yourself. You know, the, the president's the one who is, who is, who is you know, uh, responsible to the American people, not unelected appointed officials. Sorry, uh, I want to give you time to, I want to give time to put this book up here and, and, and sell it for you, but I'm curious, would you work for a Kamala Harris administration? I, I would work in any administration where I think I could make a difference, you know, and, and I, could, I could, you know, help promote American security and prosperity and American influence in the world. All right. Hmm. General McMaster, thank you very much. That book, which I was holding up a moment ago, At War With Ourselves, goes on sale tomorrow wherever you like to buy your books.